We're asked to determine the function that describes the time complexity of the following code, then express the time complexity using big O notation. Analyzing the code, first notice that the input size is n, since we are sorting an array with n elements. The conditional statement, including the swap, takes constant time, regardless of whether or not the condition is true. We will call that constant time c. It takes longer if the condition is true, but it is a constant either way. The inner loop goes from j equals zero to j equals i minus one, so it executes i times and takes c times i time. But what is i? This is where things get a little more complicated than in previous examples. Notice that the outer loop is changing the value of i. We need to look at this a little more carefully. The first time through the outer loop, i is equal to n minus one, so the inner loop takes c times the quantity n minus one time. The second time through the outer loop, i is equal to n minus two, so the inner loop takes c times the quantity n minus two time. The kth time through the outer loop, i is equal to n minus k, so the inner loop takes c times the quantity n minus k time. This goes all the way to the nth time through the outer loop when i is equal to one, and the inner loop takes c times one time. The outer loop is simply causing the inner loop to execute over and over again, but with different parameters. Specifically, it is changing the limit on the inner loop. Thus, we need to add up the time taken for all of these calls to the inner loop. Doing so, we have the total time required for bubble sort is f of n is equal to c times the quantity n minus one plus c times the quantity n minus two all the way down to plus c times one. All the products have a common factor of c. Let's factor the c out, which gives us f of n is equal to c times the sum of n minus one, n minus two, n minus three, all the way down to one. Let's change the order of the sum inside the parentheses, which gives us c times the sum of one, two, three, all the way down to n minus two and n minus one. And now let's work on determining the sum inside the parentheses. Notice if we add the first and last term, we have n. If we add the second and second to last term, we have n. So if we pair the terms this way, we have a sum of n, and because the sum has n minus one terms, there are n minus one divided by two sums equal to n, which indicates we can write f of n as f of n is equal to the product of c, n, and n minus one all divided by two. Again, n represents the sum of the pairs, and the n minus one divided by two represents the number of pairs. The function f of n is the function that describes the time complexity, and since it is a quadratic function, the time complexity is big O of n squared. I hope you found this helpful.